Now we will look at how we can alter different ventilation parameters and what they mean. For the purpose of this video, we will assume that our patient is sedated and that he's on mandatory ventilation. The first thing that can be altered is O2. Oxygen should always be titrated to target saturations and the minimal amount of O2 needed should be used to meet these target saturations. The effect of this should be followed by looking at your O2 saturations as well as by monitoring arterial blood gases. Some machines will also have an emergency O2 button which will automatically change the inspired ventilation concentration of oxygen to 100% oxygen. PEEP is a baseline level of pressure which will splint open the small airways and alveoli, allowing for maximum oxygenation and gas exchange and preventing atelectotrauma, which is the damage which can occur when small airways open and collapse due to the sudden loss of pressure during expiration. Too much PEEP can be a problem, however, because people raise intrathoracic pressure. This will impair venous return to the heart and can potentially cause hypertension. You can monitor the effect of your changes in PEEP by looking at your saturations, your BP, and by the airway pressures. The inspiratory pressure will determine what pressure on top of your PEEP you will be delivering during inspiration. This is essentially the pressure of the inspiratory breath. This can be titrated up and down to alter the tidal volume which the patient is receiving. Excessively high pressures are to be avoided because of the risk of barotrauma, damage from high pressure, and volutrauma, which is damage from overdistension of the alveoli with large volumes of gas. You will look for the effect of changes by monitoring saturations, your tidal volumes, and your airway pressures. Next is the inspiratory-expiratory ratio, or I to E ratio. The ratio of the amount of time in one breath that a patient will spend either inspiring or expiring. A ratio is normally one to two in most patients. However, in patients such as asthmatics, a longer expiratory phase of one to three or one to four might be appropriate, as the bronchospasm prevents full exhalation. You can assess the efficacy of this setting by monitoring your plateau pressures, as well as your end tidal CO2 and by following blood gases. Lastly is the respiratory rate, which can be altered up and down dependent on what parameters you are targeting. A faster respiratory rate can allow for increased oxygenation and a lowering of CO2, which in turn can be used to correct any respiratory acidosis and normalise pH. This can also be used to reduce ICP in the context of neurotrauma by allowing for very tightly controlled CO2 levels. It is important to remember that underventilation can lead to a potential acidosis and hypercarbia, whilst overventilation can result in alkalosis and a reduced ICP. As such, it's important to set very clear parameters that you will titrate your respiratory rate to. You can follow your progress of altering the respiratory rate by monitoring saturations, end tidal CO2, blood gases and by monitoring ICP in your neuro patients. For an average adult, the following make sensible baseline settings for mandatory ventilation in a volume control mode. A tidal volume of 6 to 8 mils per kilo of ideal body weight, so around about 420 to 560 mils for an average 70 kilo male. A rest rate of 14 to 16 breaths per minute, and a peep of about five centimetres of water is a safe place to start. An I to E ratio of one to two, and your FiO2 set to whatever is appropriate for your target saturations.